pitch is down and Berkman held up. How about the, the location of the pitch? Let's take a look at that. How about that curveball? Three and two. And draws the walk. Joe Madden's wondering about the location of that pitch. He's asking the plate umpire about the location of the pitch. Well, it's been a pretty uneventful night right now, and uh, Joe has just been ejected. It was pretty uneventful. For Vic Carapaza until now. And now that Madden has been ejected, he's going to get his money's worth. And he's also trying to fire up his team. Yep. Got the fans fired up. He's fired the fans <laughs> up. That's right. Well, Joe's got a point. Let's take a look at that last pitch here. It's been a pretty aggressive zone all night long. And right this fastball with that, it's that front door sinker again. I mean, I'm telling you, that is right down the inside corner. It's a great pitch. Sure he didn't is. get it twice in that sequence. Behaving himself in June. Oh, there's another pitch. Wow. How about that one? He is not giving that pitch for whatever reason. Another good fastball there by J.P. Howell. I mean, where do you want it? Wow. Out of this spot here in the eighth. And a long fly ball down the right field side. That ball is. Christmas connects against the lefty. Hits a three run home run, and just like that, it's five to nothing. And JP Howell has just been ejected. JP Howell has been ejected by the plate umpire as well. So there's a lot of frustration right there. Martinez is coming out. He's having words with the Kerwin Danley. So the Rays not happy with what's happened here. And well, let's watch JP. Second to throw it out of play. Well, you can and, see. Uh, well, David Price is going now. Vic Carapaza said, turned around to JP and, and kind of mouthed, Did you throw that at me? And then started to look around for the ball and toss JP. And Turner hits one out to center field. Hit well. Back goes Granderson. He's got room. Ray is tagging it first, and he takes second. And now he's heading for third. The throw by Cano, and Reyes is out. Well, Reyes aggressive. 
aggressively trying to take third, and it was Eduardo Nunez who went out and made the throw as Terry Collins has been ejected from the game. Reyes felt as though A-Rod never tagged him. And Terry Collins pleading his case as he much as he could with Jerry Lane before he finally got ejected. Well, this whole play came about because Cano locks it, basically goes after the ball. Nunez. I'm sorry, Nunez, excuse me. Did he tag him? And that's that play, the home plate umpire has got to hustle the third. Did not get in a good position to see this missed tag by Alex Rodriguez. Should be a good view here. And it does not look, I don't know. Boy, it's closer than I thought when I first saw it, though. Reyes went back to tag on the fly ball to deep center and made second easily. And then as Nunez went kind of lazily after the ball, Reyes figured he could beat him to third. But did not. Now Schwann in that pitch. Pitch tracks will show you as they stay away from him. That backdoor cutter is just off the plate. He'll be off on the pitch. And Rosh doesn't get that call either. Howard will take the lock. He missed with his fifth pitch to Howard, but that one says it's right there, right at the knees. hit left here. Corey Patterson's throw to the plate is offline. Tag safe. Upward. John Roush, he gets tossed arguing right there and now he comes back in and almost knocks John Farrell over. And Roush is livid. See Epley beat the tag at home. And now, after the call, there's the slide across home plate. Aaron Seavey had tagged him, but it appeared late, and here comes John Roush. something to say and I don't blame him and Marquez is going to walk over and then he throws him and now the argument is on and it's all about the entire sequence of pitches to Ryan Howard 
And then the bang, bang, call in home plate. Yeah. And the frustration of that right there. And then when he gets all up in his mud, he's not going to have any bit of that. It was the couple of pitches to Howard that just missed. And then the play at the plate. The replay showed that Chase Utley got in there. Two on, nobody out. For Alfonso Soriano. Morrell to second. Out to first. Double play. For the second straight inning with two on and nobody out. The next Cub hitter, Castro in the first inning. Soriano here in the second. Rounds into the double play. Both on the first pitch. Well, then that's a kicker. I mean, we talk about the, the Cubs and what they can do. Now, watch watch Beckham at second base, though. Is he on the base? Let's see. He catches it. He's not even close. He's out of there. Mike Quaddy, he's out there frustrated. But he's got a point. And Quaddy has been ejected by the second base umpire, Paul Emmel. Quaddy will head back to the Cubs clubhouse. And he wants to deliver one last message. Well, again, that, that's three months of frustration right there. And he was absolutely right. And Paul Emmel just flat out missed the call there. And they have Cruz picked off and in a rundown, and Bonifacio handles it himself. What a great chance there to see his uh, straight line to line speed there, Emilio Bonifacio, and it goes 1 3 6. Yep, here comes the sprint to first. Bonifacio had a head start, though. Now Gary Pettis in the face of Angel Hernandez. The first base umpire made that call. Joined now by Ron Washington. But Gary, I don't think is arguing about the tag. He might been might have been arguing that it was a balk. Yeah, there was no question about the tag. But uh, that's about as exercise as we've seen Gary Pettis get yeah. this year. Ron's trying to let Gary get his words in. But at the same time, he's got to stick up. For, he wants to keep his coach in the game and stick up for him at the same time. And now they're also dealing with the crew chief, uh, Joe West, and that does it for Wash. Don't get too close, Wash. Well, I'm glad I'm not a very good lip reader. Uh, he is well, if you're not unloading a, it. If on you're not a very good lip reader, then you won't know what he you wouldn't know what he was saying. I don't think I want to know. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not sure what precipitated the argument, but it's gone from Gary over to Ron. This is involving all but to the home plate umpire Lance Barrett. See anything in that move? Well, it's hard to tell from that angle. Generally, if a pitcher blocks, he brings his. A left hand pitcher bring his right leg too far toward home plate, cross that imaginary 45 degree angle. You really can't tell from there. Chase Headley having a nice season for the Padres, hitting in that three hole eight, pointing to his power numbers. He's only got two home runs coming into today's ball game. 
Not here. And Headley left his bat at home plate, and he's just thrown out Headley. I'm glad we got there trying to try and protect him. Play. He wants to know what the deal was. Tim Kelly said, "Hey, he left his bat. He showed me up. See you later." He also might have turned around and said something to Timmons when he left. So Orlando Hudson kind of gathers him up, pushes him back in. He may have thought there were two outs, and this was the final out. I don't know if I'm buying that either. Well, there would have to have been a pitch in that at bat that he was unhappy with, and I don't remember any pitch that he was. You know, he may have thought there was three outs. He started to take his gloves off. But that's where he said something to but Timmons. You can't blame that swing on Tim Timmons. In the new ballpark, our plan is for it to be a little longer, which will help. Right, go ahead and finish. Bonifacio is out. He thought he was safe. Perry Hill thought he was safe. Here comes Jack McKeon. It's a big call. Bonifacio throws the helmet. I don't know if he was tossed or if Perry Hill was tossed. And now McKeon is right in his face. Time out, David. Thanks for the visit. All right, take care, guys. Thank you. Thanks, David. We'll get back for a little more excitement. And he was whoa, never touched him. Look, and this is the angle that the umpire has. And man, even from that angle, even from that angle, he clearly misses the tag. And I go off Perry Hill. Perry Hill doesn't argue a lot, and when he argues, you know that he has seen a play. The ball, the glove never moved either. Watch Worley when he goes up top. You can usually see a glove move when he hits a runner. Doesn't touch him. Bonifacio was safe. And unfortunately, Bonnie gets thrown out of the game. Here's Bonifacio's reaction as he throws his helmet down. You know what? I, I don't know that you... Again, you have an umpire who knows he made a bad call throwing out a player. It's not all about him. It's not about the umpire being in a game. It's about the player playing the game. Dunn trying to keep it a one-run game and get to the bottom of the ninth. for comfort a 3 2 pitch and there is that walk again leading off an inning. It's just something you have to stay away from late in a game especially a one run game like this. Now, and John Buck is letting home plate umpire Kerwin Danley know a little bit about because it. remember Buck was rung up and he just gets tossed. Buck was run up on a pitch that was in and now he and Danley are going at it. Buck was run up on a pitch that was inside further than that one and that's why he's been all over Danley. And I'll tell you what, John Buck is one of the calmest guys you ever want to be around. For him to get fired up, I'll tell you another thing has come together here tonight, Rich. A couple of guys thrown out. You're, you're talking about a group of guys that are probably working on three or four hours sleep. You're talking about umpires who have not been very consistent tonight at first base and behind the plate. It's been a frustrating evening. Buck still jawing at Kerwin Danley. Full count here on Abreu. And he takes a called strike three. Off speed pitch. And Bobby doesn't like the call. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Verlander. One complete here at the Big A. And we have no score. First inning, he 
rejected by Angel Campos. It's a 3 2 pitch. Bobby thinking it was below the knees. Bobby's got a pretty good idea of the strike zone. And as it goes, you can't argue balls and strikes. That's usually a cause for automatic ejection. Especially for that long a period of time. He may be able to get a, a few words in here and there, but not stay there for a while. But Bobby, always a guy that knows exactly where the strike zone is. The change up, middle part of the plate might have been slightly below the strike zone, but certainly a pretty good pitch by Verlander and a pitch that, you know, Bobby decided there was no way he was going to swing at because he felt it was a ball. Another 0-2. A slow bouncer towards short. Peralta. The ball came up on him. And he's safe at first. Boy, from up here, it looked like a, a close play. It looked like Howie was out. And I guess that's got to be a, an infield single. Jim Leland might just blow a gasket on this one. I mean, that, did you see he was out or safe? I thought he was out. I thought he was out, too. I mean, the only thing it could have been is Victor Martinez's foot was off the base, maybe, because of the high throw. I mean, the ball came up on Peralta, a little bit of a high throw. Looks like the foot's on the bag. Better angle right here to see if his foot is up, off the base. Ball's in the glove before the foot hits the bag. Yeah. Joe West, an earful. And Angel Hernandez trying to get between the two guys. Jim Leland has been ejected from this game. And I got a feeling it's a carryover effect from that infield base hit, quote unquote, in the second to Howie Kendrick. And then there's a carryover of Justin Verlander having to get a new baseball after Angel Hernandez directed Angel Campos to put a new baseball into play. And so Leland is going to get his, his money's worth here. I think you're, you're right on the second part as far as Leland's protecting Verlander also. So I'm happy with that. You're right about that call with Howie going down the line. That should be the only run scored in this ball game, but I think he's protecting Verlander. You can see by his reaction in the dugout. So Leland now has been ejected. This is kind of what happened between innings. Looks like Leland is you know, pointing at Campos as well as Hernandez for that situation with Verlander, and that's what Joe West kind of gave him the, the left-handed heave home. So Dan Heron is ready to go. Leland has vacated the dugout. A little bit of a delay here. Lays off the 3-2 changeup, and it's a walk with two outs here in the eighth inning. Boy, considering the two pitches that he swung at to get in the hole at 0-1-2, pretty good plate discipline to, to lay off the 3-2 change piece. And after that changeup was out of strike, so Verlander waved over to that dugout. I said, don't come out. Stay where you're at. Lloyd McClendon has already made the move the minute he came out of the dugout. Verlander doesn't appear to be too happy. Benoit had been loosening. So a pitching change here in the eighth with two outs and a man on. And now Verlander's been ejected by Angel Hernandez as a moot point as he gives him his two cents. He and Joe West. And Angel's on top by the score of one to nothing. You know, regular shortstop hole, and that's something he hasn't been able to do. And you can see right there how he, he manipulated the swing. Wow. He just can't quite manipulate the first base umpire. But Sisson has to drag him out of there. He gets in the game, and it didn't work. Gets is thrown out of the game after he was thrown out by Peralta. I don't know if we've seen that emotion from Chris Getz since he's become a Royal. 
Chris gets called out at first base by umpire Tom Hallion very close maybe gets barely beat the throw it wasn't obvious and gets vehement in his argument with Tom Hallion who told him to hit the showers like you said Ryan, that's the most emotion we've seen mm -hmm. from Chris Guest this year but it shows you how hard he's playing and how hard he's running down the line but when you look at the replay if he hits that base with the front of his toe then it's a little more easier play to call that for the umpire but when you set that whole foot down it's still a close play. So Reddick at third base, one out, David Ortiz the batter. 94 and inside. Gonna try to come in again. 2 and 0. Oh. Inside again, and Ortiz takes exception to this. Third time he's come in. All three have been fastballs, and the benches are gonna empty. And Ortiz has a pretty good idea what Greg's trying to do. The Red Sox just been bombing away. Red Sox pounded him last night, pounded him tonight, and it's it seemed like it was just a matter of time before some Red Sox got thrown at. We're going to talk it over now as this conversation continues. The four umpires are together. Now the question is, would they throw David Ortiz out of the game for making a move toward the mound? We're going to hand out warnings, which seems reasonable. 3-0 pitch. David lifts it in the air to shallow right. And oh, here we Ortiz. Go. Here Ortiz we go. is going out and it's time to fight. <laughs> Greg said something to Ortiz as he popped out. Wanted him to run and then Ortiz ran right out at him. are starting to pick up in the middle as they try to pull some guys off. As soon as Ortiz made contact Greg said something to Ortiz Ortiz saw it and that's when he went out. Now watch Greg after the contact. Run down to first base. Run down to first base. He took a left in he David. Tried to come with a left uppercut. Well, ejected from this game is Kevin Gregg. His open umpire did that right away. Yeah, and I'm sure David Ortiz also ejected from the ball game. Now they'll call out both managers and tell uh, each one of them who's been ejected from this ballgame. 
Looks like Mike Easterbrook's got the list. Sounds like somebody may be in the bullpen, maybe going too. That's the part when it gets difficult to yes. see when both bullpens empty and all climb in the middle and of a pile. Guys don't have uniform numbers on either. You get yeah. stuff covered up. And the jersey's on and they're still talking it over here. Terry Francona on the other side getting information. See what else we see in this pile and who's doing what. Like Ron Johnson's down there at the bottom. I'm trying to get RJ out of there is now you have to look at the back of the pile and see what's happening here because here come the bullpens. Papelbon getting involved with somebody. Lackey getting involved with somebody. And Buck Showalter is hot. Salt Lamonti walking in from the uh, bullpen. They're calling down to the pen, maybe to get somebody else. Again he goes and he lays off the breaking pitch. He did not go. Don't worry about the throw down to second base because the third base umpire Sam Holbrook says that Condor did not go and that's a walk. So a single and a walk puts two men on with nobody out here. Mike Trout coming to the plate. Eric Wedge is going to come out and argue this with Sam Holbrook. I don't know what you could argue. He didn't go around, I so I don't think he can argue that. It's ball four, so it doesn't really matter. And the home plate umpire, Todd Titchener, asked for help. This could be a quick one for Eric Wedge. Pretty heated argument on a check swing. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, coming across the diamond. Tough angle to tell as to whether or not he went around. The Titchener did not make the call whatsoever. Asked for help at third, and Holbrook never hesitated. He made the safe call. Well, you credit Sam Holbrook for letting Eric Wedge 
express his opinion not elevated any more than what it was because Eric Wedge was pretty heated there. I was trying to figure out why it took him so long to come out of the dugout. You wonder if he wasn't even paying attention to that. He was probably looking down to second base to throw from the level clearly in time to get Trumbo. Trying to come back in again. And it hits Guerrero on the hand. Guerrero not happy at all. Another Oriole hit in the hand. And they're going to eject Weiland. Oh. Jeez. There have already been warnings passed out. Another Orioles hit in the hand, and Wyland is tossed. Yeah, that's that's too much for me. I mean, you gotta have a feel for the game for crying out loud. There is no way he's doing that on purpose. There's no way Guthrie was was uh, is trying to hit the Eucalyst with a changeup, and there's no way Wyland right there was trying to hit Vlad Guerrero. I mean, you gotta have a feel for the game. I mean, that was not intentional right there. That's a changeup that hits him off the elbow. This kid just wild inside right there, gets Guerrero. And if the umpire thinks he was throwing at him and throws him out of the game, that's just absolutely ridiculous. This one is thrown behind Ortiz and Gonzalez is ejected. Here we go again. This one you think this thing is over, it comes back again. Well, that means Showalt is gonna go too, both both pitcher and manager. This one uh, way behind David Ortiz. And this sets up an interesting future game wise with the Red Sox and Orioles with lots of games left in the season series. And Gonzalez tossed from this game. As you said, Buck Showalter automatically tossed from this game. He's not you know, packed up his stuff yet. Uh, to this point, I didn't agree with any of them. That one, I do agree with. Not just because it's on the Red Sox side, but that was very obvious from Gonzalez. Yes. The one that. This is becoming borderline ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, the, the first one on the changeup. No. That, no no uh, way. Get in on, there's no chance. That's where the warnings start today. So it started wrong. And then Marty Foster really did not have much of a feel for the game with the ejection of rookie Kyle Weiland. No feel. And then now this, and this clearly the first obvious one of the day, and Gonzalez is out for the day, and Buck Showalter gone. We will step aside with the new pitcher coming in. It's 7 6 Red Sox. He's on the hook now. And this is to center field. Here comes Dexter, and here comes Corey Hart, and he is safe. Wow. Boy, Ionette is not happy at all about that. And he just got it. thrown out of the ball game. I have never seen Chris Ionetta that angry. Ever. I mean, Corey Blazer threw him out in a nanosecond. He slammed the mask to the ground. Corey got quick with it. The tag's right out here. Jim's going to go with him. And, he, and you know what? They, and, and I don't blame Jim for this because of Ionetta's emotion. Alfonso recently recalled will have to come to the bullpen get dressed and then he didn't anticipate seeing him in a game tonight it would be tomorrow. We'll check I don't I think that's got to be the first career ejection for Ionetta. Here's the throw by Fowler. 
It's right on the money. Ionetta's got the baseball and he tags. He's out. Yeah, he looks out. I mean, Corey's right in the right place to make this call. But did that foot get in first? No, it did not. And that's why Annette is mad. You're going to really see it here. Great pickup by Chris. Yeah, ground down, tag applied. Out well, there. Well, well, that doesn't show the plate. Yeah, you can't see the plate there. I mean, the tag is up on the thigh area. You see Matt Reynolds back there backing up the throw. I think the pre I think the previous angle. Now the mask. He slammed the mask down just to show him. Second, and no, they won't. do not. The shortstop Terrio comes off the bag, and he is right in the face of the second base umpire, Mike Muchlinski. And here comes Tony Larusa, and, and he's out. out of the game is Terrio. And now Terrio is actually bumping and shoving the umpire, having to be held back. And you can mark it down; he will be suspended for a significant period of time for those actions. He bumped both of them. He got Machlinski. Then he got somebody else. That's a double bump. Well, let's take a look. He's off the bag. Had the throne not been high, Tom, I think you would have called him out easily. And there's a bump by Terrio, immediately thrown out of the game. Another umpire steps in to try and separate him. And Terrio has his hands on that umpire, trying to maneuver around him. You just can't do it. You just can't do it. That could be a major league suspension there for Terrio. That'll be Descalzo coming in in his spot, I would imagine. There at shortstop. Yep. That's strike two as Kepinger throws the bat away. Whoops. And now look at this gesture. Yeah, Brad 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 Brad. Brad. I think he's telling Brad, don't you come out here. He threw him out. And, and I think Brad. And the Astros bench was reacting to Keppinger flipping the bat. We'll be right back. Oh. Okay. We're not going anywhere. But Brad Mills uh, is being heard here, although he's been thrown out of the game. The pitch looked pretty good. The 3 1 pitch looked good. Cooper calls it a little late. Again, this one borderline down. Kepinger flips the bat away, and there comes the call. And he said, I don't want to hear anymore. It looks well down from that view. The fifth yeah, time, and, and I'm not even sure that that Brad was the guy that was yelling from the dugout. True. We don't know who was. Sometimes the manager yeah. takes the fall for somebody else's comments. See, fifth time Brad's been thrown out this year. Might have been broke. Well, Pedrique will take over as the skipper. Brad Mills taking his leave. And Kepinger will go back in the box with a 3 2 count, two outs, and the runner will be headed for second. Clint Barmas. Three walks to load the bases. Nobody out. Scoreless game in the top of the 11th. Listen, he just made the defensive play to save the game. He has to make the offensive <laughs> play to win the game. No swing. It's a great take. 
All the fastballs and you get a borderline take and it goes your way and you're right Bobby he makes the defensive play. I don't know I think you caught a break there. Hmm. Ninth pitch of the at bat upcoming. McGee strikes him out for out number one. And Joe Madden is on his way back to the mound. Yelling bad call about the check swing at third base. But they got the out of pitch later as Madden goes to his bullpen again. For right hander Juan Cruz. Joe Madden still upset about the check swing call that didn't go Tampa Bay's way that Reddick did not go around that he got tossed. It's a little frustration plus a little inspiration. Pops him up back of the plate. Shopik with room. Scudero threw his bat down and it almost hit Shopik as he was making the catch. And the inning is over. More fireworks between innings. The Rays are upset after Marco Scudero popped up. Watch him throw the bat. Right there. And the Rays were upset that nobody noticed or ejected Marco Scudero. Dave Martinez, the acting manager, because Joe Madden's already been ejected, came out and argued, and he got tossed. Now, you look at the numbers, they're not that much higher than they were. He's at about 91, but he says the ball's coming out of his hand better. And he's not concerned about velocity. And the Yankees say they're not, that was 91 miles an hour right there. You know, at the beginning of the season, he was at 88, 89. But last year at times, he was at 94 a lot. Yeah. And that 94 was getting by people. It was kind of sneaking. In. And jokingly, I told you that's kind of a. We were talking about it before the game. My kind of a, a new term. You know, coming it's out of com hand. coming out of your hand. Well, if you're throwing 95, you throw 95. I don't care how it comes out of your hand. It's just it's kind of a strange way to look at it. But I can't imagine what Melvin's talking about here. Really don't know what this is about. Jeff Nelson, the crew chief, comes in to listen in as well. You know what he's doing out here, Michael? He's he's wondering if uh, New York's got the ten run rule in effect when it's a hundred degrees or more. I, I, I have no idea what that was about. You're confused. I'm totally confused. And it's not the heat. Because I'm sure that Marty Foster really wants to have an argument tonight. <laughs> Owen one to Weeks with McGee to follow. Just off the plate. Now Sam Holbrook's been getting an earful quite a bit from the Giants bench, and he's getting right close to that saturation point. That mask comes off and somebody just got banged. This is Brock Lotus. I'm laughing because Bruce Bochy said, Yeah, you get kicked out, you go out there. Just head on out there. Well, if you're going to get tossed, at least get a little money's worth. Yeah. Take it for the manager. So this was what <laughs> here comes Bruce Bochy.
Well, Joe West has been down this a few times. Not often you see a, a bench coach come out there and get tossed and argue. And I think Bruce Bochy is picking up the argument. And they sit in the outside corner. Now, if you're sitting in the Giants dugout, you're thinking the way that ball's caught, it's right between the knees, and it's not called a strike, but you know, they, they set that target way on the outside corner, so I don't think it crossed the plate. No. Did not. This popped up. But we get a break, we get a fourth out, and we come up with three runs. Blipper to the six leading, 4 2. This was between innings. This went on for a while. Come back and get him no walks, make him hit his way on. It's still grumbling about strike two, and he's very close. Remember, Braves are very short-handed, oh. and now McClough is thrown out of the game, which is not good news at all. And now Freddie's been tossed. That is bad. It was strike two that made McClough upset. It did look low, and, and right here, Nate started to say something that, that just bit his lip. But then on the strikeout, he couldn't contain himself. Jerry Meals looking into the Atlanta dugout, waiting for Freddie Gonzalez to depart. He too was ejected. And Freddie now realizes that as he looks over the lineup card, he'll hand it over to bench coach Carlos Tosca. I don't think Freddie knows he threw him out. Everybody on the Braves railings looking toward the home plate umpire wondering what's going on. And now. Yes, Freddie heads downstairs ejected for the second time as the Braves skipper. Swung to the. Austin didn't take any movement toward first base, though, after he was hit, apparently, by that pitch. Uh, Leland having a chat with Brian Knight. So that uh, looked like it hit him. First base umpire Jerry Lane coming in now to join in the contact. And Leland getting uh, a little bit hot here. This stays a foul ball. And now he's been thrown out of the game. I think Leland's been tossed, or somebody else is, maybe. Lloyd McClendon just threw his arms up in the Tiger dugout. Somebody's been tossed by Jerry Lane all the way from first base. And McClendon's saying, Who, me? Jerry's got him, whoever it is. And here comes Leland again, I think. He's getting off his seat. And it's Leland that's been thrown out of the game. How about that? 
Well, Jim was just sitting on the bench. Apparently, was barking a little bit too much for Jerry Lane. He's been ejected. All over the head of Billy Butler, and then Carrasco has been ejected by Scott Barry. And now Lou Marson intervening with Butler. The Royals dugout emptying out onto the field. Jack Hanahan also coming in to tell Butler to ease up. And certainly understand Butler's sensitivity there. That ball sailing over his head right after a grand slam was hit. But doesn't make any difference. Carlos Carrasco has been tossed. That was bad on Carrasco's part. The umpires quickly restoring order, telling the Royals to get back into the dugout. In the meantime, we'll get a new pitcher. And when you give up a grand slam and you throw the next pitch right at a guy's head, you know what, you're going to get your own guys hurt. Uh, you know what? That. Not at the coconut. I'm sorry. That's just not right on Carrasco's part. You no. want to move their feet, that's fine. You want to go from the armpits down below, that's fine. That That's not Major League right there going at somebody's head. I'm sorry. He, he got rocked around. It was his fault. He couldn't control it. But you don't start throwing at people's heads. Third time through. Bouncing ball. Kinsler behind second, and he's going to take a hit away. Now, look at Escobar say he came off the bag, and I'm not sure. Oh, he threw him out of the game. That was awfully quick by Marvin Hudson. But Escobar had a good look at the foot of Michael Young, and it looked like Young may have come off the bag. But Escobar has been thrown out of this game. And very quickly, too. I don't know what he said to Marvin Hudson, but it was enough to get him tossed from this ball game. I think Escobar had a better look at it than Marvin Hudson, just because he was on the one side and Hudson was on the other side of the bat. Kinsler once again takes a hit away from a batter of the Blue Jays by going up the middle. You can see where he is positioned. Makes the play. This is Michael Young's 26th game at first base. His start. And you can see from where the first base umpire is, he's got to get a good look. And it looks from that angle like he was off the bat. You see Escobar pointing at the foot before he got to first base. Thought he lost contact with the bank. On this trip. To the right side. Out at second and a takeout slide by Holiday. And two runs are going to score. As Castro did not get up and look toward the plate. This game is tied. I think I would argue that play. I'm not too sure Matt Holiday could touch second base when he made this slide. Castro, no, he could. He went over the bag. So while he slid late, I think Mike Quaddy is out to talk to second base umpire. Carlos Pena is the first one. And now Samarja is saying, go home, go home. But I don't believe he had the attention of Starlin Castro. Uh, now, Holiday has got to be able to touch the bag. But it, what it looked like on the replay was that his left hand went over the bag. And to me, if I'm an umpire trying to make that call, I allow it. Because all he has to do is reach down and he could touch the bag. So, I mean, was the bag reachable? Yes. Did he slide late? Yes. Here's Samarja saying, get up and throw home. This game is tied. Castro appears to be okay. And Quaddy was late to get out there, and now he's letting second base umpire Daryl Cousins, the crew chief, hear it. And the crowd here in St. Louis is letting Quaddy hear it. And Quaddy's gone. I think that's a good point, Joe. I, I think unless you get out there right away, you're not going to win the argument. 
if you take your time getting out there, I mean, you're not as forceful as you would, would be had you run off the bench and got out there and got in his face. May still not get the call, but, I mean, that's the proper way to argue, it seems. And a frustrated Mike Waddy is letting Daryl Cousins hear it. Had interference been called, by the way, that would have erased two runs. Not one, but two. As it is, two runs score, and it's a 5-5 game. And that's it for Quaddy. Here it is again. Now this angle is a little skewed, so it's not right down the line. But you see Holiday, who's built like an NFL tight end or linebacker. 6-5. Come in and take out the legs by sticking his leg out and getting the left ankle or foot of Starlin Castro. And the 3 2 pitch. High drive, deep right field, way back to the track, to the wall. It's gone. Carlos Guillen has made it 3 0. He's issuing warnings right now because of this. Was talking with a home plate umpire. Carlos Guillen watched the home run and Weaver did not appreciate it. He had some words for Carlos Guillen and the home plate umpire, Hunter Wendelstead. He saw it right away. And he got out there and had a very lengthy conversation with Jared Weaver. And after that conversation, he determined, I need to warn both of these teams right now. Here is Alex Avila. Oh, he's going to be thrown out of the game. Weaver thrown out his hand. He didn't care. Oh, look at Weaver wanting to take on the dugout now. He is coming on rambling. Well, you can't throw somebody's head. Weaver walking right off the mound. He knew that was coming, but come on now. Weaver is hot. Well, he's upset about Carlos Guillen watching the home run. That's what he's upset about. And even though he was warned, he really didn't care. Alex Avila, the unlucky participant that had to follow that home run. So it didn't take long for Wendelset to throw Weaver out of this game. On what was a beautifully pitched ball game on both sides, unraveling now for Weaver. There's no doubt Carlos watched this one. He had a little bat flip and a little stare at Weaver. See, I understand, Rob, that you're upset, but when you start coming at the head, that just ain't right. No, it's not. Uh, I mean, that's my opinion, but. He wasn't trying to hit him. He no. was simply trying to send a message. And he knew he was going to get thrown out of the game. But you're absolutely right. Um, when you are pitching, uh, that is one area where. Uh, the ball should not be thrown up around the guy's head. And Weaver was tossed out of the game, and then Weaver just lost it on the umpire. And he was yelling at the Tigers as well. But there had to be something yeah. that happened earlier that was not part of the highlights that I saw. Yeah, because usually you don't see much of that with Jim Leland's clubs. Jim Leland managing the. No, it was Tigers? yeah, it was clearly yeah, was, Carlos Guillen had a reason for doing what he did. I, I hope, <laughs> I hope anyways. <laughs> so the game, the inning is over. Sweeney's called out on strikes. He may have gotten thrown out. Well, there's no doubt that Dan Bellino's had a few people tonight or this afternoon. That ball, Ryan Sweeney thought was a ball and then swung and missed. And he must have said something magical as he was walking because Bellino. I mean, it's like Bellino knew what he was going to do. And no doubt Bob Melvin very upset of the ejection because he didn't, you know, he only has three guys, three players, extra guys because of eight relievers. 
but you had to figure Dan Molina's going to get somebody today. And Jeff just happened to be Ryan Sweeney, his first career ejection. 